Okay, YouTube, I think the uh, cell holder is working okay for charging these. I charged up the 10 single cells overnight. Had a couple issues. One is I forgot to uh, disable the capacity limit on the IMAX, which is defaulted to 6,000 milliamp hours. So it ran up to 6,000 last night, and then I had to restart it. I've cleared the capacity limit now. I did run into this position had a high resistance. The cell voltage in here was significantly lower than the rest. I need to take this one back in and re-solder the two connections there. And then the other thing I found was that I could use my balance cable here into the iMac. So I've got this, this cable hooked up. This one is just a blank or an extension cable right now. It's a 4S cable plugged in here, but I only have the first two connections, the 0 and 1 pin hooked up there. And that lets me get over here and monitor the single cell voltage. And that seemed to help speed up the charging because it kept it on the 1 amp charge quite a bit longer. I think it did the whole 6 amp hours before this cut off at 1 amp and then it started ramping down. The thing I noticed here was when I went from four cells, that was my original charging setup was this four cell holder. When I was using that, this charger worked okay, but this charger would cut off early. When I went to the 10 cells, this charger only ran up to about 400 milliamp hours and then it said the cells were charged. So I added the balance cable and that seems to help with the voltage sensing. So not quite sure I understand what's going on because I was doing one amp charge with four cells and that worked okay. I did the same one amp charge with 10 cells and that didn't work okay until I added the balance connectors. What I'm going to do is let's take this back inside and I'm going to solder on a permanent balance connector and then we'll also check out this uh, one bad connection there. So here we are back on the workbench and I want to try to figure out which connection is bad. So I'm going to hook up my negative down there and that guy checks out okay. And if I put the that one up here, that connection is bad. So I guess I, I must have broke this one. Here I'm measuring on the bus wire and I've got a good connection, but if I measure on the terminal here, nothing. So there's my bad connection. I think it must have broke when I screwed the thing down. Yeah, I think what happened was that solid copper wire popped up here. It's got a bit of a curve to it, so maybe what I need to do is I'll go and uh, I might have to reheat the two joints on either side and get them down a little bit. Here is my new balance cable. So what I'm going to do is I'll just solder the red and black wire onto the bus wires and then I'll have a, a balance cable there. It's a 4S cable but I'm only using the first two positions on there. Okay, there we go. YouTube got my plus and minus uh, balance cables on there. Put a little cable clamp there to hold them in place. I think that's going to work. So now I've got my charging connection there and then I'm measuring the voltage off the end. And I've checked voltage on all the battery contacts and I get, get the same voltage down all the sides. So what I need to do now is let's pull these cells out and I'll take the cells that are in the I charger power shelf right now and put these in here and then the other thing I think I'll try is see how the Turnigy charger works with a balance cable. Yeah so it looks like the uh, balance cable on the Turnigy charger doesn't really help. This is the problem I was having before. It only put 700 milliamp hours into 10 cells and says they're charged. So I'm going to go back here and use the IMAX because at least it puts a decent charge in there. It, it goes to a higher voltage. It's more like 3.85 where this one seems to go to 3.7. 
I wanted to use the Turnigy because you can go up much higher current on storage charge. You can see I had it at a 3 amp setting and it started out at 3 amps but within just a few minutes it drops down and and then says it's fully charged which I don't think it is. It, you know, I just took 17 amp hours out of these 10 cells and then try to uh, bring them back to storage charge and it only put 700 milliamp hours back in. So that's only 70 milliamp hours per cell and usually storage charge is around half the cell capacity. So for some reason the storage charge voltage on this one is just a little bit low. This one's a little high but at least it uh, seems to do a pretty good job and it puts about 10 amp hours in so I'm going to switch over here okay I'm back over on the IMAX so battery check and it's showing zero series because it's seeing the cells is not charged yeah it jumps up to 1 amp and now the voltage jumps up here to 3.8 but if we look at the balance connection there's the 3.7 that this one ended at yeah, so the IMAX B6 ran all night. It's at about uh, 16 hours, roughly, and 96.44 milliamp hours, if you can see that on the screen. And I got my battery temperature sensor connected up right. Yeah, 13C on the temperature sensor, and then we got 3.85. So that's the voltage that the uh, this IMAX B6 does for storage charge. Yeah, I think that works. So. I have to now pull these cells out. I have another batch to go. So this takes about as much time to charge as my charge-discharge cycle on the eye charger. Because this is running 1 amp, the eye charger is running 3 amps. So it's a little bit quicker. But it's got to do a charge and then a discharge. This thing just has to do a single charge. So that should hopefully double my throughput on on testing cells. So I've got a couple more boxes to go through and but I think that is a success. Anyway I just wanted to show you the finished uh, charge there. 9644 milliamp hours so that's roughly one amp hour per cell and then that way all of these cells should be roughly equally charged when I go to uh, pair them up into my final battery holders. But yeah, if you have any questions about the uh, storage charge fixture, it's pretty simple. So I've got my charging lead on that side. I've got my balance leads over here. And I can take up to 12 cells. So I can use this, you know, for any number of cells. I don't have to use 10. I, I'll probably use this when I get back to testing the pairs of cells, too. I can put the pairs of cells in here, one pair, two pairs. I can do 10, 10 or 12 separate cells. So I think what I'm going to do is just keep this old IMAX B6 for storage charge duties and then I'll use this one here for doing regular charge discharge cycles. But yeah, I think that's a, a good job for this one. It seems to do okay on storage charge. It's a little high on the voltage, but it seems to put in a decent amount of charge. It can now run all by itself and just charge up 10 cells back to storage charge. So that's what I was looking for. Anyway, if you have any questions about that, post up in the comment section down below here. And I'll put some other videos on the left side you might be interested in. And as always, thanks for watching.